Few business leaders or entrepreneurs in American history have done more to enable progress and prosperity than Samuel Insull, despite how few know of his existence. Yet, 80 years ago, he was one of the most famous people in America and Europe, and would go on to become one of the most despised. Starting with nothing, the entrepreneurial Insull became one of the most intelligent and skilled entrepreneurs to have lived through the later 1800s and into the first half of the 20th century. He did more to bring electricity to America than any person outside of the inventors. He put together an energy empire worth billions, only to lose it all. What happened then is one of the great tragedies of business history. So let's jump right into the story of one of the most important people in mass-produced electricity, as we learn something new. Samuel Insull was born in London on November 11th, 1859. His father, who worked as the secretary for the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom from 1866 to 1874, was able to make just enough to afford to send their children off to a private school in Oxford, where Sam and his two brothers were tutored by Oxford students. Even from a young age, Samuel Insull demonstrated lifelong attributes that would serve him well. The historian that would go on to become his biographer stated that Sam was small, but his physical endurance was boundless, and his energy was inexhaustible. He invariably woke early, abruptly, completely, and bursting with energy. Yet he gained momentum as the day wore on, and long into the night. It would only be late in his life that he learned how to relax, and it did not come easily. Throughout his life, Sam made himself into a sponge for knowledge. He preferred the concrete to the abstract, the practical to the ideological. Specifically, he was excelling in math and loving history, economics, and the classics, and especially learning to see the heart of relations between things, between people, and to grasp the underlying principles so clearly that he could perceive ways to shift them around a bit and make them work even better. These skills came in handy when the Prime Minister's first ministry ended, and Sam's father lost his job. The family had to move back to London, hoping that the father and Sam's older brother could find work. His father ended up lining up a job for Sam at his friend's tourist agency. The job wouldn't be open for several months, and Sam's father demanded that he wait. After an argument ensued, Sam stormed out and headed directly to the London Times office to study the Help Wanted ads. He found a job as an office boy at a firm of real estate auctioneers. It paid about $1.25 a week, less than the cost of daily railway fare and lunch. So Sam walked to work and skipped lunch. Thus, in July of 1874, the 14-year-old started his first job. He was never to retire until forced out of his job 58 years later. And even then, he had new plans and ideas that he was constantly working on. Sam spent the next four and a half years at the auction firm, absorbing the world of business, especially real estate. And when a senior clerk told Insull his handwriting was awful, he quickly learned to make it better. Impressed with the hard work and diligence, the clerk started teaching Sam shorthand, which Sam studied and practiced every night. Soon, he became an expert stenographer, picking up outside jobs and doing them in the evenings, leading to Sam spending four evenings a week from 8 to midnight from 1877 to 1879, taking down the words of Thomas Bowles, then editor of the magazine Vanity Fair. It was here he learned the power of the printed word and the importance of political education from him. Even throughout all of this, Sam's curiosity never slowed. With multiple jobs, he really only had time to read while riding on trains, which he could afford now that he was moonlighting. And although he did not have the time or the spare pieces of paper to take notes, he attempted his best to develop the skill of memorizing everything he read. And yet, with all of this, he still squeezed in time for the theater, opera, cycling, and a literary society. As secretary for that literary society, essentially a book club for readers and writers to gather, he invited P.T. Barnum to come as a speaker and kept in touch afterward. From this, he would develop his knowledge more about marketing and promotion. Sam was then asked to speak to the group himself. Lacking time, he figured he could just find an interesting article in an American magazine that his friends had not seen yet and talk about what he learned. And that's when his life would change forever. As it so happened, Scribner's Monthly Magazine had an article on a 31-year-old American named Thomas Edison. Samuel Insull started reading everything he could to find out more about Edison. In 1879, Sam, then 19, took a job as a secretary to an American banker who lived and worked in London, which was the world's primary financial and stock market of the time. This would help him greatly, as the man was also Thomas Edison's representative in London. Interested by what he had learned so far, Sam dug in further. 
studying every piece of paper that related to Edison and memorizing it all along the way. By the fall of that year, when Edison's top engineer, Edward Johnson, came to London to conduct business for Edison, Johnson found that Samuel Insull knew more about Edison's European interests than anyone else, including Edison himself. While he was there, Sam spent every available minute talking to Johnson and Edison's other engineers, learning all the details of the technologies they were working on, usually while he carried their pliers and strung wires for them. And when Edison first opened a telephone exchange in London, Sam was the first operator. And when Edward Johnson griped that Englishmen were lazy, unwilling to work on the weekends, Sam volunteered to do Johnson's secretarial work for free at Johnson's residence any time he was needed. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Atlantic, Edison was finding himself increasingly busy, leading his personal and business affairs to near complete chaos. Johnson soon realized that Samuel Insull would make an ideal assistant for Edison if the right opportunity arose. And by that time, 20-year-old Sam was well-known in financial and leadership circles in London. In fact, Sam turned down the chance to go into banking in New York City for the big investment firm Drexel Morgan when their London office offered to coordinate the job because Sam idolized Thomas Edison and ended up only wanting to work for him. Finally, after Johnson returned to the States from his London assignment, he began to drop hints to Edison about Insull. And in January of 1881, when Edison's private secretary quit, unsurprisingly of course, as he was already known at this point to be an extremely difficult person to work for, Johnson sent word to Insull immediately to come to America right away, without any further information on what the job was or how much it would pay. Sam's friends and relatives told him it would be reckless to quit his job, which had allowed him to earn more than 400 pounds a year and cross the ocean based on so little information, working for some crazy inventor who most certainly was not yet world-renowned. But Sam felt he knew better. His mother only made him make one promise, that he would never touch alcohol, and that was a promise he would keep till the day he died. On February 28, 1881, the 21-year-old Samuel Insull landed in New York, setting foot in the United States for the very first time. And within a few hours, he was in Edison's office in Manhattan. Thomas Edison was extremely focused at this point on commercializing electric services, starting with a small area of downtown Manhattan. But his investors, including JP Morgan, refused to put up the money for these larger scale projects. So Edison was prepared to sell anything he owned to finance the project. First on the chopping block were his interest in European telephone securities. Johnson was leaving for Europe in nine hours to sell the shares, so Edison and Johnson grilled Insull. What was the best way to sell the stock? Where should it be sold? How much was it worth? Insull resoundingly answered all their questions, going over documents all night. From that moment forward, Samuel Insull was Edison's top finance man and business executive. After a couple of hours of sleep, Sam was back at work at Edison's office. When Edison asked him how much he wanted to be paid, Sam answered, whatever suits you. So Edison started him at $100 a month. It became clear that Thomas Edison's financial affairs were a complete mess, and his challenges and obstacles were immense. But it was these problems that were Samuel Insull's greatest opportunities. Investors would not invest more funds, but Edison's concept of central station electricity required substantial capital. At the time, it was far easier to sell businesses on the idea of isolated plants, a separate power plant and generator in each office building or store, which would serve just that building. On the other hand, the central station idea, which was providing electricity to an enormous area, comparatively up to a mile from the central station, required tearing up streets, laying copper wires, rewiring buildings, and generating the electricity itself in a larger power plant. The entire system, all the parts from the light switches to the bulb sockets to wiring, had to be invented and had to be tested and manufactured and hardest of all, had to be sold. Capital was difficult to find, and when Edison got some, it was spent quickly. He needed someone to take on and organize all these tasks. The man making it all work, rationalizing and integrating Edison's efforts, became Samuel Insull. Every bit of Sam's renowned energy was required. And at the same time he carried all those executive burdens, he continued as Edison's personal assistant. He answered Edison's mail, bought his clothes, wrote his checks, fetched his umbrella when he needed it, woke him up from his frequent naps throughout the day, whatever it took to get the job done and to make progress. Thomas Edison soon realized that few men were as loyal to him as Sam, and that Sam worked even harder and longer than Edison himself did. And he did it all with incredible speed, organization, and efficiency, leading to Edison keeping him on in this role for the next 11 years. From here, Sam's life would take off, 
reaching new heights that he could have never imagined for himself, at least before it would all come crashing down. We're going to explore how he changed America and worked with some of the most influential people of the century in order to prepare the country to move into the age of electricity. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out when that video drops next Thursday. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.